first of all, I'm, I'm blessed to, to be able to do what I do, and I'm so thankful to God for this opportunity uh, that he's given me. Um, the, the young men I get to impact every day, I mean, they probably impact me more than I impact them. Uh, the terrific staff we had have, and I mean, I get to live life with really great men, and um, man, that environment out there, uh, our fans, how they showed up today and tonight, and you know, just to honor our seniors. Uh, I might have been more nervous than the seniors uh, just because, you know, we've had a really good year so far, and you just want them to, to be able to leave the court with a really good feeling their last time on there. And uh, even uh, whether we won or lost this game, uh, I had something planned for us to do at the end because we were going to honor these guys because this game didn't, like, determine, you know, what kind of season we had. Uh, but I was very thankful that we were able to win so that we could celebrate fully uh, at the end. And so, Jerome, now that the home slate is over, you look back and, you know, you turn this place into an arena where not a whole lot of fans came last year to now to the atmosphere you've seen lately. How fulfilling is it to, to play in this place every night? It's a, it's, it's a huge blessing. And I, before the game, I just was looking around and, just, man, God, you know, what God has been able to do here and um, with the hard work of our staff and our players, you know, it's it was, it's just incredible, man. And, uh, you know, um, I, I kind of thought I knew what it would be like, but it, like, has surpassed anything that I, I would have imagined. And so. And I also want to ask about Naquan. When he hits some three-pointers, how much does that help not only his game but the entire team opening up the floor? I think the first thing is when Naquan doesn't foul, he gets to play more, right? And when he plays more, we are better. And then when he runs the floor, it opens everything up because usually the guy who's guarding him is a big fella who has to worry about chasing him down the court, and then he gets these open looks, right? And, and when he gets open looks, I think he's going to make them. He's been working been working at it we've been showing him film we've been encouraging him when he turns stuff down to we want you to shoot it and so yeah it helps that but I think the other parts of it helped him be able to hit some threes because he wasn't in foul trouble so he wasn't sitting on the bench and then when he was on the bench it was because he wasn't running the floor and so hey we need you to run and when he decided to run hard in the second half he gets 19 points coach I want to ask you about you talked about your staff I want to ask you specifically about coach Perry and the development of the offense from where it was maybe at the start of the season to where you guys are now and just kind of talk about the job he has done on that well, side. Rodney Perry is uh, is just an incredible human being and uh, a savant at basketball. He like just devours it. Like, uh, you know, what I've been most impressed with is how he's taken ownership of it. You know, I've asked him to take this over and um, what I want it to look like. And, you know, we discuss what we want to do each game and uh, kind of what we want to run and, and the way he sees it. And it's, it's always a blessing when you have someone that sees the game the way you see it. You know, but our offense is like, like 55th, maybe 57th in the country. You know, I, I've been, our defense is top 15 in the country. So, I mean, what Yurik and uh, Dream have done on the defensive side of things really allows our offense to go. Cause I don't think we've executed in the half court yet the way both Rodney and I want to see it executed, you know, and, and so I think there's room to get better. But, I, I mean, our whole staff has, has just been incredible. I'd put him up against anybody in the country. And I asked Keontae this question, but the last few games he's really started to take more shots behind the three-point line. Um, has that been a concentration um, for you guys is to get him more shot, more open shots from three? And when he makes them, just how much – better does that make him of a player? I mean, he's shooting 40 plus percent from three. I mean, I want him shooting open shots. I think sometimes he um, he's not shot ready. He catches and kind of surveys the defense and allows them to, to load up on him. And we want him to like, uh, it, when he's open from three, we want him to shoot the ball. And when he's driving, we want him to get to his spot and just rise up and shoot over the top of people because he's capable of doing it. And I think the assertiveness that he has, it's helping him. How good was Desi? Oh, incredible. Almost had a triple-double. I mean, he was locked in. He, I mean, Des is a winner, man. I, I, I just, like, I, you could try to find other words, but that's what it boils down to. Whatever you need 
that game to win, Desi's willing to provide. And I just tell you the other day, uh, Oklahoma State, uh, Des is at the scores table, ready to check in. It's late in the second half. Cam hits a three in transition. That's who Desi's going to. He looks at me, he gets up, he runs back to the bench. He goes, hey, he, he's, Cam's in his groove. And, I mean, like, that's a winner, right? Like, I, I forget what he, the numbers he puts up on the floor. When a young man can see that, right, and be that kind of a teammate, those are the kind of dudes, like, in tough situations, you can get some stuff done with. And Des does whatever it takes for us to win. And then what was the biggest catalyst that, that kind of got you guys going after that, those first 13 minutes of the first half? Well, I knew going into the game we would have some guys who were going to try too hard because it was senior night and some guys who weren't going to – were going to try not to try too hard. And I think we saw that in the first half from everyone that was on the floor, right? Just And so you just needed us to relax and – just, okay, let's get into the game and stop. Don't worry about it being senior night. Don't worry about your parents and everybody, all the family in the stands and all of that, all the emotions, you know, um, w with the game. And then our defense cranked up and we got some turnovers. We got to get out and play in transition. And, um, so I think that's what got us going. Along those lines, um, when you weren't hitting shots, it seemed like the defense from the start was – was pretty well locked in, plus the rebounding advantage. How how big was that just to to get you through those first few minutes? No, it was huge. And uh, I mean, we I think we had, but I think we had seven offensive rebounds in the first half. I'm not I'm pretty close on that. But we only had five points, right? So we weren't getting the paycheck. Like we was doing the work, but and so we had to like capitalize on those. I well, I don't know what we ended up with. Uh, Ten and second chance points was still only nine. Like we didn't. We weren't efficient with our offensive rebound, but allowing us to get more possessions and making them have to guard longer, that definitely helped us. Coach, you guys win the fast break advantage 24-10, but how much does Marquise looking for David and Naquan when they're running the floor ahead of the play help in that kind of regard of getting quick buckets and getting easy layups and dunks? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's huge. Something that we work on, you know, a couple times a week. I wouldn't say we do it every day, but it's it's part of what we do. And uh, if you can get a rim runner and you get two guys running to the bottom X, it spreads the floor. A guard who can deliver that pass. Now the defense has to, you know, get flat, and then you can get into stuff offensively. So yeah, no, it's big. And uh, David's so fast, and Quan is so fast at their position that as they continue to embrace that part of it, it's just going to make the game easier for, for them and for us. Is there anything that Marquise does that's specifically like incredible about looking ahead for that? Well, it's not an easy pass. Like It looks easy, but it's not an easy pass because you have to read, is there somebody below the big or not? And uh, that, that's his read. If somebody's below him, he's not throwing the pass. If somebody's not, if they're below the free throw line, we're not going to throw the pass because there's not enough room to catch it. So it's, it's a timing thing. So, but, I mean, my man's got some serious vision, right? He's not second in the country or third in the country and assists by accident, right? He's been, he's been blessed with vision and, and a willingness to throw passes. Coach, you guys have talked a couple times this year about some of the studies you've done about getting Naquan a shot earlier, getting Marquise a three early to fall. Um, as you look at some of the role players on your team or guys that come off the bench, I'm sure you've done similar studies with them. What kind of keys are there to getting some of those guys involved at a high level? Um, we, we always want them to be involved, but like, you know, I learned a long time ago, and I give Bill Peterson credit for this. He told me, he said, Jerome, good coaches get their best players the most shots. So we're not coming out trying to get one of the mother dude shots. We're trying to get Keese and Keontae shots, right, and get them in position either to shoot the ball or most of the time people put two people on them and then have them make the simple read. When Keontae and Marquise make the simple read and they throw the ball to it, then we get to play three on two on the backside. And I felt like we did that more today, whether it was pitching ahead, whether it was throwing out of the, the double on the ball screen and then allowing those other guys to make plays. And that, that, that really helped us. And then uh, because other guys were making shots, it opened up bigger bubbles for Desi to be able to drive downhill and then in turn give Marquise opportunity to play one on one later in the second half. Since Desi's been moved into the starting lineup, it seems to have helped Cam find some positive 
level of play over the last three games. Do you think that there's any correlation between those two things? And if so, what do you think it might be? I Man, offense is always better when you have three guards on the floor. It just provides so much more spacing. And then you have Keontae at the four, and he's really a guard, but he's playing the four. And, you know, I mean, so now the floor is really spaced, and you've got a fast guy who's could be a three, right? But he's playing the five. Because he's and so I mean you're just so much faster and there's so much more spacing. So uh, we just don't have a a fourth or a fifth guard that we can keep all three of them out there for a long period of time. I know there's a lot of factors, but was the biggest difference maker for you guys in the last three weeks was like your recognition that you needed more rest and to be fresher? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt, it was. All right, we have guys that have a high care factor. Uh, they're willing to work. They're gonna do whatever I ask them to. And sometimes you have to know what not to ask them to do. And I thought that that's a credit to our staff, recognizing that and us adjusting. You've already talked about how good of a person Bebe is, but I find out tonight that he's also a husband and a father. I mean, what kind of dedication does that guy show you um, just by living his life? He's the, he's darn near the best human being I've ever been around, right? And he's definitely the best. Uh, Jonathan Chamochachua is an unbelievable human being and teammate, and Bebe might be a better teammate th than him. And just how he cares, and 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 his um, he's devout. He's devout in his faith. He's devout to his wife and his son. He's devout to his mother, who he talks to every night. I mean, he's very devout, and, and you can count on him, right? Like can. He's going to give you everything he got, and if that means be on the bench this game, then he's going to give you everything he has on the bench, cheering for his teammates, and um, uh, just just very very thankful. His his value to our team can't be quantified in numbers and stats. Defense had a lot to do with it, but is it an oversimplification that once the ball stopped sticking, you guys got some side to side movement that it free things up offensively? Um, yeah, I mean, but it, our defense, what it is, we got to get out in transition and, uh, you know, we were able to recognize a couple things that they struggled with offensively and uh, defensively with what we would run. And um, to get to that, we had to move the ball side to side and the guys bought into doing it. We've talked to the players. Now I'm interested how senior day was for you. Man, it was nerve-wracking, right? Because uh, first of all, I didn't know how I would respond out there. But the more importantly is you want them to leave the floor being able to celebrate, right? So there's this pressure like, you know, man, we got to win this game for these guys. Like, we have to be locked in. and But I can't be – like, I still have to make it fun for them. And even though, like, I've got all these nerves – because, I, I mean, you just want to win the last game, right? They're the last time. I've been in senior nights – when you lose the last one and it's, it's never fun, right? And so I had in my head, okay, if we lose, this is what we're gonna do and this is how we're gonna, and if we win, this is what we're gonna do. And, and you know, and, and I really, I was, and then, then when they started hand, calling the kids out and the young men out and you know, we're giving them their jerseys and stuff and I'm thinking, man, this dude had one year left and he trusted us, you know? Uh, man, this guy's coming off this thing and and he trusts us, you know, man, this dude could have left and went somewhere else and he trusted us to stay is just, it was pretty, pretty emotional early and, and nerve wracking until the last few minutes. And then I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. I locked in, right? Are you guys heading into the final one? I, I don't know, we'll find out tomorrow, you know? Um, I, I, I feel like, you know, we're, we're starting to get into a rhythm whether it's subbing or you know what we're doing in practice and um and so the I think the, the guys I don't think they're tired of of winning and I don't think they're tired of getting better and so I, I'm very very proud that's the maturity that they have but I mean West Virginia you know it's their senior night and they are going to be locked in and their fans are going to be rocking and rolling and you know Keity Johnson's been there you know for four years he's a real senior and Emmett Matthews, you know, he was there before, so he spent three years there. He, I mean, he's, they, they got some people invested there, right, and, and their fans support him. And so we're going to have to be even more focused, and, and we have to go win the game because they're not going to give it to us. The last couple of opponents that you guys have played for the most part, you had played 
like a month prior. What, what's the biggest challenge about playing a team that you haven't seen since the very beginning of conference play? Yeah, remembering that they got out to like an 18 to, I don't know, was it like 18 to 2 or something like that? And I was thinking, man, we might not be able to score in the Big 12, you know? <laughs> and just their pressure and, and then our guys fighting. Just, you know, because all our guys remember is that we beat them, but it was an overtime game. You know, and, and I mean, it's one possession. A free throw doesn't go in or something, and, and it's it's different, right? And so, um, you know, just and, – and they're – like, it seems like every time we're getting ready to play somebody, they're the hottest team in the league, right? <laughs> so they're as hot as anybody in our league right now, and so it's it, it's going to be – it's going to be something. A uh, team that has had extreme national success in the tournament before. What about this group makes you think that success like that can be had with, with this group of guys? Uh, we got two dudes who can uh, get their shot anytime. Um, I always feel like those two guys are um, – we have two of the best players on the floor. Um, I think we got a, a, a team that cares about guarding – and, uh, you know, the numbers show, you know, we got one of the top 25, top 15 defenses in the country. And, um, you know, the hardest game to win is the first one, right? And uh, I feel like our staff will have us, uh, we'll, we'll be prepared for that first one. So, you know, just, man, I'm just excited that, that you get to ask me that question, right? Because who would have thought we'd have been talking about, you know, I, we thought we had a, a, a tournament team. I didn't think we'd be fighting you know right there on the verge of a two seed you know and so um but these guys have proven everybody wrong and so I'm excited actually what coach Marco he did a um a, a mentor for our guys the other day and he said you know a lot of people try to prove people wrong let's just prove the people right that really believe in us and uh so I think that approach has really helped us too that we the people who believe in us that that's who we're doing this for not the ones who didn't Thank you. Coach. All right. Appreciate Thank you. You have a great night.